Hi, welcome to my video on Edison three-wire circuits. Uh, so very common three-wire, multi-wire branch circuits. Um, you see something like this in a residential 120, 240. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna be talking DC. It's a little bit simpler, but the same principle applies. So now I like to look at it, the, the load is what determines the amount of current that flows. So we're gonna use this example here. We're gonna say, you know, this is a four amp load and a six amp load and a 12 amp load. So the load is gonna determine the current flow. Um, first thing I wanna do is I want to apply Kirchhoff's current law to this circuit. Now Kirchhoff's current law says that all current entering a node must equal the current leaving that node. And I've got a link to a video below for Kirchhoff's laws. Uh, check that out if you're not sure what I'm talking about. So in this case, uh, what we know is leaving this node right here, I've got four amps going down and I've got 12 amps going that way. Now Kirchhoff's current law tells us that means I have 16 amps flowing into that node which means I really have 16 amps leaving my source and going that way. So my 12 amps flows through that load, which means I end up with 12 amps flowing into this node at the bottom. Six amps flowing through this load means I have six amps flowing into that node. Now 12 plus six amps both flowing into that node means I'm gonna have 18 amps flowing out of that node and back up to the source. Okay, well, I only have 16 leaving my source and 18 coming here. So where the magic happens is all in this uh, neutral or common conductor. So we know I have four amps flowing down from there and I have six amps flowing down into that bottom load, which means if I have six amps here, I have to get my two amps from somewhere else so that comes down my neutral conductor. So I'm gonna pull two amps from the source, which makes sense here. I have 18 amps and I have 16 amps going up and two amps going that way. <laughs> so that would be applying Kirchhoff's current law. You know, all the current entering a node equals the current leaving that same node. So, where this takes us now is now I want to talk about voltage drops. So in this case, we know that conductors have a resistive value. So if conductors have a resistive value, we are going to see a voltage drop at all those points. So we are going to apply uh, Ohm's law and we're just going to say, okay, my voltage drop is equal to the current flowing through it times the resistance. So, we're gonna say that each of these is 0 0.05 ohms. So I'm gonna go around and just put all the voltage drops. So here I have 16 amps, which gives me a voltage drop of 0 0.8 volts. Here I have 12 amps, which gives me 0 0.6 volts. Again, 12 amps, 0 0.6 volts. 18 amps gives me 0 0.9 volts. Here I had that uh, two amps, 0 0.05 ohms, gives me 0 0.1 volts. So that gives me all of my voltage drops of my conductor. Next up, what I wanna do is I wanna label the polarity. So here, uh, this is negative, because it's connected to negative, and positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Now those ones are all easy, right? This is positive because it's connected to the positive terminal. This is negative because it's connected to the negative terminal. And that's just how the current's flowing through the circuit. Now, the polarity of this guy in the middle of our neutral or our common conductor, because current is flowing this way and we're using electron flow, current flows from negative to positive. So that's how I'm going to identify all of my polarities. Now, the very last step in my uh, process here is I'm going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, what Kirchhoff's voltage law says 
is the sum of all the voltages in a closed loop equals zero. So let's talk about my loops. I have three loops here I'm gonna work with. We'll talk this one first. So in this loop, I have positive 120 volts. Following the loop around, goes through negative 0.1 volts. This is gonna be a voltage drop as well, and negative 0.9. If it has to equal zero, that means this equals 119 volts. 120 minus 0.1 minus 119 minus 0.9 equals zero. Awesome. Now I have this loop up here, and this is gonna be the toughest of all the loops. So what we have here, now again, we're following the loop. We're not following the polarity of the devices. So here I have positive 120, negative 0.8. This is gonna be a negative value. But this one right here is actually, because of the way the loop is going, positive 0.1 volts. So 120 minus 0.8 plus 0.1, that means this has to be 119.3 volts. So let's do the math. 120 minus 0.8 minus 119.3 plus 0.1 equals zero. Now the very last loop is this loop right here. So this loop right here, um, oh, forgot our polarities on this one. We have positive 119, positive 119.3, minus 0.6, minus 0.6. So when we do all that math, that means this has to be 237.1 volts. So let's do the math. Positive 119 plus positive 119, minus 0.6, minus 237.1, minus 0.6 equals zero. So I went through that pretty quick, but again, just double check the math, pause the video or whatever. Um, I really hope this helps just kind of explaining Kirchhoff's current and Kirchhoff's voltage law within an Edison three wire circuit. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out the other videos below that might be helpful to you. And I'd love it if you could subscribe and check out the other videos. Thanks again.